ready? All right. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the uh, uh, meeting of the Transient Guest Tax Committee. I'm Richard Harmon. One of the other committee members announce your appearance, please. Uh, Nathan Schmidt. Elaine Schwartz. Thank you. Uh, first order of business um, is 2013 City of Topeka Heritage Tourism Grant Application Procedures. Uh, Mr. Colson, is Mr. Fyander going to present on behalf of staff? Mr. Fyander. Probably at the podium where you can be heard and recorded. Bill Feinder, Planning Director. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, committee members, when last we spoke, this was back in August uh, at your last meeting, this was before you. The, um, since then, the, uh, and based on that meeting, based on your comments, the, this program uh, was put forth between, before the Heritage Tourism Committee, made up of the Landmarks Commission, Visit Topeka, uh, Tourism Alliance, Lodging Association, and Freedom's Frontier. So <clears throat> that group got together, looked at the comments that were made from this meeting, and, and recommended uh, grant guidelines back to you. And let me just go over those in kind of in su summation of what was before you, and then I'll go over the changes that were made uh, coming back from that committee. Basically, the program is <coughs> A, using bed tax money, a portion of the bed tax money t for physical restorative improvements to, to historic landmarks. National, state, local landmarks or within historic district. Um, there is a, it is a 50-50 match. The grant pays for 50% of the improvements, of the eligible improvements, and half of that could be for in, actually half of the applicants match could be for in-kind. So in total, 25% of a total project award could be in-kind. Uh, but it's a 50-50 program. Our 50, or the city's 50, in this case is a reimbursement. And that basically just means that the city pays for the work after it's completed. Um, this was a major suggestion made by finance uh, when we did the last program, or the last go around, it was, it, was a, it was a bit cumbersome to, to follow. Um, we would have to distribute the money and then go, and some of that was in-kind work, and then uh, do the inspections, and, and it, it became quite a bit of an inefficient operation. So uh, a reimbursement is critical to, to making this a lot more efficient from our standpoint. Uh, all the work will need to be completed using, again, Secretary of Interior standards. Uh, which would be reviewed by the Landmarks Commission. They would also have to meet any city codes and take two years to complete. Um, the strengths of the application or when there is an application to be reviewed by the committee, the things that, that we're looking for, again, are historical significance and economic impact it would make to tourism, uh, the urgency or need of repair, of the, of the building, a demonstrated marketing plan, and a show of community support. Also the ability to complete the project and ensure a 10-year um, operation. So the process is really, the application comes to the planning department, we look for its eligibility, and then we pass it on to the Historic Tourism Review Committee. Uh, they, which is made up of the, those, those landmarks commissioners and, and representatives of the, of the uh, Tourism, Freedom Frontier, and uh, Tourism Alliance, and the Lodging Association. They look at that, and then they make a recommendation to you, in this body, and mm -hmm. you ultimately decide the awards. So, uh, based on coming back to the changes that were before you, and hopefully they should be in red, or else that, will, that wouldn't be good. Uh, the changes have been made to the document in red, um, and I can summarize those. In, in about five or six lines. Um, on the first page, uh, you have an insertion of the uh, 
in-kind labor rates. I think there was a discussion on specifically how do we determine what an in-kind labor rate is. So we plug that in to base it on the Kansas rate as determined by independent sector, um, which, is, which is a recognized source. Uh, the, on the second page, we've, you'll see a lot more red, and that's really trying to mirror the application form and the application contents. I think the last time it was before you, there were some things missing from the application uh, procedures on that second page that were in the application form and vice versa. Those are synced up now. So everything that you have on the second page, one through, well, uh, certainly one through seven um, should now all be tracking with the application form itself. Some of the additional changes on that page include um, just clarifying more, more specificity on what documentation could be or should be submitted to show, um, to, to, sh to demonstrate support. Um, there was also, the committee talked about reserving the right not to fund the entire allocation. And so I think that is also indicated on there that you don't, you would determine, you, you may just uh, award a portion of the entire fund, not that you have to, to, to award the entire fund. Um, we did allow an exception to the two year completion period. As was discussed the last time, this could be granted by the Historic Tourism uh, Review Committee, but uh, applicants cannot apply again until they do complete the project. And then we just added some annual dates on there so we can have a, a so organizations know a, what is the um, annual deadlines for the program. That was another suggestion by the committee. I think oh, all in all, <coughs> unless you have any the questions, I would just emphasize that the strength coming forth in, the, in, these, in these guidelines and this go around of the program really raises the bar for heritage tourism, uh, the grants for heritage tourism, and really to help heritage tourism applicants raise their bar. Um, I think this will help to integrate uh, heritage tourism more into the community than it is now by doing that. We also will we'll see a greater return. We want to see a greater return on the bed tax dollar investment. So that is also another um, strength, and I think all in all a greater accountability of the, of the limited public funds that, that we have. And lastly, it, it is a more efficient way to run the program from the city standpoint in terms of processing um, the application and, and dispersing the funds. Okay. So. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Committee have any questions on the uh, proposed revisions to the grant application procedures? Schwartz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Bill, I had asked in August for how many the number of entities that could apply for these grants that were that were considered historic um, registered right. entities, and how many are there? I think we had. I think we had sent that around. Uh, if I remember. Six or seven, Tim. Historically, it's uh, I think there have been five entities that have taken advantage of the program. There are a few others that I've noticed their absence actually. So I mean, expanding the, the total universe of, 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 of potential applicants, I would say. Uh, oh, yeah. pardon me. I'm sorry. Uh, I would uh, I'd say there's probably ten maybe a dozen eligible entities that could justify their place as historic, historical tourism destinations or attractions here within Topeka. And I was hoping to get a list. I mean, I, I really would yeah. like to see who this draft is geared towards, who would be eligible to apply for the grants. Yeah, um, that, the, the initial criteria obviously would be that they have to, uh, be on the national register or the state register or a local a local landmark. So those are the initial criteria. But and and secondly, can you list who the ten would be? Uh, ultimately, I mean, completely. Uh, there may be one that I'm I'm leaving out, but I would anticipate 
uh, Sumner Elementary, for instance, would okay. be one. Uh, the Topeka Cemetery would be another. Uh, certainly, the uh, the five entities that have uh, received grants thus far would would uh, be uh, eligible. Uh, continuing. And, and who are those? I, uh, uh, the Constitution Hall, uh, the Ritchie House. Uh, the Curtis House, Jayhawk Theater, and the uh, Topeka Council for the Colored Women's Club's building, which is uh, the, it's being restored by uh, the Living the Dream here in Topeka. Those have been the applicants thus far. Uh, the Overland Station would be another eligible applicant. Uh, it, it's it's hard to, uh, I mean it. Beyond that, I mean, the Jay, oh, well, the Jayhawk Theater, um, yeah, they have applied uh, previously, and they would certainly be eligible in the future. Um, beyond that, it's, it's hard to predict precisely who. I mean, if someone has a property and can make a legitimate justification that they are, that they have a, that they're worth uh, being a destination, or they could be a destination for heritage tours, and by all means, we would welcome their application. What about but Old Prairie Town, or that would be? Uh, it's it's another governmental entity, uh, and Shawnee County. I don't know. Theoretically, I suppose they could apply for some for some funding through this, but they would have, I mean, their own uh, funding sources to. You know, through, through their own Parks and Rec department okay. to, uh, to to do that. So that would be nine that that you've listed off there that would have the yeah. possibility. Yeah. And then I've been doing a little bit of research to find out, um, and I'm I'm still confused as to who the Historic Tourism Committee bylaws or the committee itself. When mm -hmm. I go on our website and I look for this committee, it keeps coming up with the Topeka Landmarks Commission. So is this a new committee? Yes. Okay, it, and, and it, it was adopted in June, is that? Yes, the, the, the bylaws were approved in uh, June, and that, well, I, I have them here and they're on, on the agenda for approval, and it, it was uh, an error on my part that they, I didn't realize at the time that after they were adopted that they needed subsequent approval by the Transient and Gas Tax mm -hmm. Committee, and so. So yeah, this committee isn't in, we don't have a committee Tourism Historic Tourism Committee yet, or do yes, we? we? Do. Yes, we do. We do. Yes, okay. they have have met. Uh, uh, they have met and approved the well. They approved the guidelines or the, the, the bylaws, and they have met and approved the uh, the draft version of the uh, uh, grant review program or the grant program and okay. guidelines that you have before you. And and okay. and they have, they they recommended these be adopted. Yes. Okay. And if you remember, in the spring, I believe you actually. Have Appointed the uh, members um, at one of your council meetings. meetings. So it was the, the nine landmarks commissioners, and then you had to appoint the uh, three or three four. three of the four that were mm -hmm. designated. Yeah. So we just don't have it up on the website yet. Okay. Possibly not. The uh, the, the historic the preservation. Yeah, the historic tourism committee. Yeah. Okay. But we know. Yeah, we know who they are. Okay. Okay. That's all for now. So. Okay. Thank you. I did have I did have one question um, on the, the first page of the uh, the process you talk about um, how we've we've moved from or moved to a matching fund to you know 50% matching fund due to inefficiency did we was this actually I mean do we have a demonstrated problem with People taking these funds and not using them. Well, there's there, there's two two kind of issues there. One is the match itself. I think the match was uh, tw uh, 75, 25, 80, 80 20. 20. Sorry, 80, 20 last time. So we we did raise the bar um, that the grantee would have to come up with more leverage. Uh, so and then also it would have to be. So it's not just all city cash. It is. It have to be other cash involved. Um, and then the second part of that was, which I think you're getting is the reimbursement process uh, that we're recommending now. The last time, yes, it was uh, very inefficient for us and finance um, to then track down um, 
disperse the money and then go and go and go track down how it was used. This way, it's all the work has already been done, and we go out and we don't track down the work necessarily and, and where the money went. We just we are submitted an invoice um, and go um, make sure it's completed and the work was is eligible, um, and then distribute it for reimbursement. We used to do a program, the facade. We had a facade improvement program. Uh, a few years ago, we did exactly the same way. It, it seemed to work very efficiently. Um, and so with heavy advice from, from finance, we, we uh, mirrored that. Okay, the, the issue that, that I have with this and is that, you know, we're taking away, by lowering the, you know, the matching fund, and by also requiring money up front, I mean, ninety-seven thousand dollars split up through however many people is not a considerable amount of money for most of these projects, but it is startup money, and we're functioning as a basically a supplier of startup money for a lot of these projects. The problem is that we're requiring that they already have startup money for a lot of these projects, and. I guess what I'm what I'm curious about is uh, I understand that it's simpler to verify if we reimburse and uh, I think that makes it less cumbersome I'm not sure it makes it less efficient because it, what I'm asking is are there any demonstrate has there been any demonstrated abuse of of that practice have we you know Given out monies and then those monies not spent for what the the grant. Do you want to address that? Yeah. Yeah. Tim was a staff person and res responsible for taking in the application, and doing working with finance on the disbursement. Uh, the the direct answer is no. I'm not, I've not been exposed. I'm not aware of any money that was uh, used inappropriately. However, tracking the dis the distribution of grant money that was given up front, the initial 25% before work was actually completed, uh, and the, uh, the uh, 5,000, or the 5% the retainage of that, and the dispersion, the distinction between how much of this money was grant money, how much of this was match money, how much of this was in kind, it really became an accounting problem, uh, and, and finance and, and I, struggled in, in many occasions to keep track of the expenditures by some of the recipients. And in this manner, when the project is, when we receive a receipt for work that has been paid for and already done, we reimburse, it's very clean in that sense. And it makes it much more efficient. And uh, I think it provides some surety to the city that their money has, has not been misspent. I mean, it just eliminates that, uh, that, that possibility. But the change is due to m making the process easier for us, not due to any malfeasance on the part of right. any recipients. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's not any, been any instance where I've been aware of, of, a, of a grant applicant uh, formally misusing funds. It's just a matter of accounting and, and making it more efficient. Thank you. Do you have a follow up? No. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, have we had any, I mean, of those nine that can apply, have you had any input from them as to the new draft and whether or not they have a problem with the match and the paying for it up front and then get ring, getting reimbursed? I mean, is this going to be an issue with more than one or two of these folks, or is this... <coughs> I mean, I would, I would not want to do something that we're, we're changing the rules and thereby then we kind of eliminate who can apply and who cannot. I, I, I would be surprised if this actually eliminates uh, anyone who could apply. Uh, this potentially even could expand the numbers of, of people who could apply. Uh, but uh, I, I, I'm Sorry, it's, it's, um, could you, uh, as far as the numbers of people can apply, yes. Right, I, have you I, had I, any input on oh, the draft? Oh, the, the input. Yeah. Um, actually, no. 
I've personally, no, I've not received any uh, input. Uh, this has not gone public. Okay, so and the nine so, entities have not seen, I mean, no, they... No, the, the, the people who would be uh, potential applicants, yeah. uh, if they ask for them, yes, we will provide them to them, but they have not been distributed as a, uh, you know, these are what's possible, but because they haven't been approved yet, mm -hmm. we've not uh, distributed them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Tim, did you look at the possible? I mean, I've worked with a lot of grants over the years. Did you, instead of doing the reimbursement piece, did you look at a format where you could have the paperwork that was required to be turned in instead of, you know, paying after they spent the money and then reimbursing? I mean, because there, I mean, if it's a problem with the city having to track where the money's going, what's happening, and all of that, a lot of grant applications you have the format where you have to specifically say where you're spending the money and how you're doing it rather than spend the money first and then get reimbursed or even having the match. Well, a, a budget is required okay. with specific allocations of, of expected expenditures relative to the project. Okay. And there's obviously going to be some variability. Uh, I mean, nothing ever turns out the way you project it, it will, but a, a budget and source of, of financing and source of revenue on behalf of the applicant is required as part of the application process with the, app, you know, with the application. Okay. So that is a part of, I mean, that, that's built in. Okay. Um, well, I also am a little uncomfortable with this whole process because I, you know, I know there's some concern out there that it is gonna eliminate um, you know, some of the list. And I would, I would like to see us have the opportunity to either have a, a hearing where we have people understand what's going on and have it changed um, but and, and with the new historic review c committee I mean I'm trying to f I'm trying myself to follow what the city's been doing and how we've been doing historic preservation and even though I've only been here you know since April I get very confused as to what the landmark commission does what the historic tourism committee does what the historic preservation plan does mm -hmm. You know, all of yeah, that is right. kind of confusing. Right. What I would, uh, we were, as Tim said, we were really waiting to get this thing to the point where we feel comfortable enough, and then and then get um, more. Uh, we we could arrange it for everyone to take a look at that that we think would be a potential grantee or put it out there. That's that's yes, that's entirely possible and, and something we were. Want, waiting for uh, this to, to gel, if you will. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Hiller, can I call you to the podium? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, Actually, I just need to call you to a microphone. Yes. Uh, these, uh, the last time we met back in August, you had suggested some, some revisions to these uh, uh, these procedures and and uh, it appears to me that the suggestions that you made were incorporated have you had a chance to look at this and uh, tell us whether or not you're comfortable with the revisions that you suggested and that were presently before us I have looked at it I do think that the suggestions were accommodated I um, both in terms of tightening it up on our end as the city, and then uh, I'll let Councilwoman Schwartz can speak for herself, but both of us have been grant writers and, and grant administrators, and uh, the instructions now flow with the application itself. They tie back and forth very well. I, th I think it's, it's well done and, and ready to go. Okay. Uh, I, I was very pleased with the work that worked out on it. Okay, thank you very much. I wanted you to have an opportunity to speak to that. While I'm here, if I could respond just a moment to the sure. points that were made. Um, I think the city need, in a way, ought to just make the decision about the match money or not on its own, in that an applicant would certainly tell you if you're willing to give them 100% of the money, they'd be glad to take it and not have to have match money. Um, because one of the reasons, as I understood it, that the staff proposed to go to the 50-50 was because these organizations do need to raise money from multiple sources. This funding was never intended to be 
uh, or, or maybe even 80% of the funding because when you're fixing a building, generally a lot needs to be done. I would suggest, I can't be sure, but that the 50-50, the way it's set up and allowing half of that 50% to be in kind if there is labor that can be donated could in fact help those applicants because if you can double your money, if they can go to other donors and suggest that they can double their money, that could help get them out the door and get some other funding flowing. I, I think it could be a positive. Um, you can decide f for yourselves, of course, but um, uh, these, these organizations need to get out and, and raise money from multiple sources. I would also suggest on the list that East Topeka United Methodist Church would probably yes. also be a candidate for that list. These are not listed, uh, but they are if they don't have to be listed, but they are have a significant building, they could, right? Well, no? okay, let's okay. stay focused that, this way. That I just wanted to Ideally, suggest that. Yes, okay, it's, it's about the uh, about the match money, I do think okay. that can work well. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you. you. Those comments are helpful. Thank you, Mr. Finder. If I can ask you a question, um, we have two items on the agenda. One is the, uh, the grant application procedures, which we've been discussing. The second one is the Historic Tourism Committee bylaws. Um, are they tied together? Does one, do we need to consider, well, they're both separate agenda items, but can we go ahead and, and do, do the guidelines first and the bylaws second, sure. or are they so interconnected that? They're not, they are not interconnected. Oh, okay. It's just a requirements okay. uh, in code that, that you adopt the bylaws. Okay. Very well, thank okay. you. We'll continue then on the uh, grant application procedures. Uh, what's the committee's pleasure? What do you want to do with these uh, procedures? I would be in favor of moving for uh, more public comment on the actual grant application procedures, uh, whether that be before this committee or, you know, before the uh, Historic Term Tourism Committee. Mr. Feinder, if, if what would be the effect if we directed these that some sort of a public, more public airing of these procedures? What would that? Uh, what would be the ramifications of that? Well, we, we would just have another uh, uh, slight delay while we while we pull that together. I don't think it's going to uh, hurt in the long run. Uh, we're trying to get this thing right, and I think we could take the next uh, 30 days to, to pull something together, uh, notify the grantees, potential grantees that we know, notify the public, um, and have the, we do have to schedule the committee. Um, they have other work to do, too, so we'll schedule that, a, a meeting and, and invite them. And that will be before whom? We would hope to do that before the end of the year. I'm sorry, I didn't ask the question correctly. Oh. <clears throat> before what committee or group would that Oh, it's be? the um, historic... Tourism Review Committee, okay. Grant Review Committee. <clears throat> okay. So. Do you want to make that in form of a motion, Councilman Schmidt? Um, I move that that this that the grant applications be tabled mm -hmm. until a public hearing can be set mm -hmm. no later than the first of the year. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that this matter uh, be tabled until uh, a public uh, hearing under the auspices of the planning department be, be held no later than January 1st, 2014. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries unanimously. Next order of business is the uh, Historic Tourism Committee bylaws. Mr. Fine, Mr. Fine, is there anything else you wanna? Um, <coughs> yeah, this is a really exciting one. Uh, we. The bylaws are really modeled after the Landmarks Commission. Um, I, I was not, uh, unless you have some questions, was not going to necessarily get into them. Um, Tim uh, Paris could, could answer any questions. Is very familiar with the bylaws of both, both groups. Uh, if we want to delve into that, but this was this was brought before that the mm. Historic Tourism Review Committee. Uh, they adopted it, and and now they've recommended your adoption. Anybody have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I read that there were seven seven members on this committee. <coughs> there's actually thirteen. There's thirteen. There's thirteen there's members nine on the Landmarks it. Commissioners, 
and then four from the individual organizations. Okay. That represent. So the and the four individual organizations are who? Uh, Freedoms Frontier, uh, Topeka Logic Lodging Association mm -hmm. representative, Visit Topeka, and then a Tur Topeka Tourism Alliance okay. representative. Good. Okay. Thanks. Do you have any questions? Okay. I'll move for the adoption. Okay, it's been moved that the Historic Tourism Committee bylaws be uh, adopted, seconded by Council Person uh, Schmidt. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The bylaws are adopted. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Mr. White, I see you uh, darkening the door. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you wish to address the committee? Chairman, members of the committee, uh, thanks. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to update you on uh, where we stand related to the budget in fiscal 13 for the transient guest tax fund. Um, I provided you with a, a quick summary. The first table at the top um, relates to the uh, to the six percent transient guest tax for kind of base uses, non-soccer uses, if we want to, whatever term we want to use there. Um, we have three quarters of actual data in. Um, in order to make payments to the, uh, to the grantees, we've got to m make an estimate related to the fourth quarter use. And you can see um, in, the, uh, in the lower right-hand corner of that table at the top, we made a projection for the fourth quarter of this year that lives somewhere in between where fourth quarter of 11 was and where four fourth quarter of 12 was. I'd ask you to look at that 1995 total for the year projection carries down into the table below that which shows you fiscal 12 actual fiscal 13 budget and fiscal 13 projected so that 1 million 995 projected on the base transient guest tax collection compares to a budget of two million one hundred thousand dollars so we're projecting to be short for the full year um, by about 100 and or by 115 thousand dollars we'll see how close that ends up um, as a result, we have reduced third quarter payments to the grantees in this program um, in order that um, if revenues came in at projection in the fourth quarter, um, that the payments in the third and the fourth quarter would get us to a spot where that deficit would be accommodated. We've not made any adjustments to the, to the items in the transfers. Um, we have contractual obligations to Railroad Heritage, and they have a bank obligation behind that, uh, Riverfront Park. The Historic Preservation Fund uh, is actually a calculated item. It is one-sixth of the base transient guest tax money minus the, uh, um, the, the Railroad Heritage and the Riverfront Park transfer, so that $132,500 projection figure is a calculated figure. As you can see, the, the, uh, the council budgeted in 2013 to have uh, uh, expenditures exceeding revenues in this fund by $45,000. Uh, based upon where we stand today, we're projecting that to be more like a $70,000 draw in fund balance. Um, the bulk of the difference between those two uh, is the additional payment to the historic preservation fund, which actually results from revenues being higher um, in, uh, in 13 than they were in 12. Um, I know that, the, that this committee um, over time has uh, um, thought clo care closely and carefully about how much fund balance to carry forward and how important that is to this group. Um, the, the third quarter payments, the final column in that second table you see, those payments with one exception will actually go out in the city's uh, accounts payable cycle tomorrow, so those will be out tomorrow. Um, if, the, if this body would like to do something differently as it relates to where we expect to end up at the end of the fiscal year, we certainly have time left in the year to accommodate that, uh, that change. But we just wanted to alert you to the fact that um, we do expect the base transient guest tax collections to be short of the estimate, and we've, uh, and we've addressed that shortfall uh, by reducing the payments to the grantees 
that you see there. Uh, everyone was notified. We actually gave folks a heads up that the cut might be um, as much as 10% across the year, which is 20% cut for third and fourth quarter to get to that shortfall. We were able to do a little bit better than that uh, based upon our reprojection, um, but wanted to give you a heads up that that was indeed the case. Uh, if things trend, trend better as we get into the fourth quarter, uh, we can um, let up on the reins a little bit, but would appreciate your guidance, this committee's guidance about um, whether this approach is acceptable to you or whether we need to take a different tact as it relates to, uh, to dealing with the revenue shortfall in 13. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Um, Court, I forgot, what did we uh, uh, base 2014 on? Uh, 2014, it's a good question, was closer to actually uh, where we expected the, the projected 2013 to be. Um, so our, our 2014 adopted budget uh, on revenues, my recollection is, is, a, is closer to 1990 than it was to 2.1 million. Okay. Ms. Schwartz. Thank you. Um, so does that ending balance that we worked on with the 2014 budget, how much off is that from what this year's is going to be? So the the, 24, the, the projected 2014 uh, beginning balance would be um, closer to the to the 165 figure. Okay. Okay. And Jeff, do you know if the fourth quarter historically trends better? I mean, are we going to meet? the predictions or is the, it going to be short? The, the reason we gave you one quarter of fiscal 11 actuals was just to highlight the how the fourth quarter looked in 11 versus 12. Um, you know, I, I, I think if you look at uh, look across fiscal 12 versus fiscal 13, same period, um, you potentially see some momentum in a positive direction over the last couple quarters, but we had a pretty sizable miss in the first quarter. So you don't know whether that's timing or how the calendar falls or where a, a big event came this year versus last year. Um, we have suggested, uh, rather than presuming that we'll end the fourth, that the fourth quarter of 13 will look like the fourth quarter of 12, that we, we split the difference between the prior years. If you go back in time, it was actually worse because you, you're, you're into the recession and, and collections were way down. So we. We didn't, we didn't want to go too much further back, but um, uh, so that's where we ended up, Okay. where Thank we you. did. <clears throat> Jeff, do you have any, uh, are, you, uh, are there any recommendations you would make to this committee with respect to the, um, to the shortfall at this time? Well, we, we, we have, in the third quarter projections, we've addressed the, the the shortfall to get us to a point where we're effectively balanced except for the fact that that historic preservation fund payment floats and you don't know to the end of the year whether your projection was right or wrong. Um, but with respect to the, to the other shortfall, we've addressed that by reducing those payments in the third quarter and if everything went according to Hoyle as we have here, we'd do the same thing in the fourth okay. quarter and mm -hmm. we'd end up with basically the same net income that we planned on with the exception of the difference in that historical preservation fund. What's um, in a case like this where you have to go to the grantees and reduce it? Do you do on a, do you do it on a proportional basis, or what's the what's the calculation roughly in terms of? We did so. This is a this is roughly a six percent reduction on a full year basis, but we already made two quarters worth of payments. So to get to six percent across the year, the reductions are actually twelve percent mm. in third quarter and twelve percent in fourth quarter. Okay, so everybody's. What everyone gets is reduced proportionally. Correct. So we're not Correct. playing favorites or Correct. anything like that. All right. Very good. How many members have any questions of Mr. White? This is very important, Jeff. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for your, your testimony and, and the figures. Uh, Mr. Colson is not here. There he is. There he is. <coughs> Just in time. <laughs> Yeah, um, we've gone through our uh, agenda and um, we have a kind of a pending or issue that on the guest, transit guest tax allocations, uh, we're kind of running up against a deadline here. Can we, uh, can we meet sometime in December uh, and hopefully 
release those allocations for 2014? Yes. Um, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I, I just know the, the uh, grant grantees are anxious and we're anxious to get it done, but I know there's some, I know staff's working on some things, so I just want to get your input. Yeah, Your Honor, I, I, would, su I would suggest that, that we uh, plan on having a meeting the second week of December. Okay. Uh, we realize that we are getting late. There's some clarifications we're trying to make, and uh, so we could work to work towards okay. the second week of December meeting. Okay, why don't we, why don't we do that? So, All right. Thank you very much. All right. Um, any, out of any other business to come before the committee at this time? Nope. Okay. Uh, obtain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Council Member Schwartz. Seconded by Council Member Schmidt. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you all for the conferees for attending and for your testimony. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will. It's going to get worse next year if we move.